Yo, what's going on snipers and welcome back to our Albuquerque Aliens Draft of Glory franchise mode here in NHL 25. So in last episode we simulated the year, I think year 6 season was it? Year 6? Let me just double check here. Yeah, year 6. And uh, we had our best season yet and we're going in the right direction for sure because this season we had 27 wins you could see, 44 losses and 11 overtime losses. So technically we had points in 38 of our games this season which is quite impressive we also did win some hardware which i will show you guys in a second but uh yeah we had some pretty good point production again we actually had some players that were plus in plus minus which is also pretty impressive i would say considering this is only year six uh and also we also almost had like a defenseman like tuzolino get close to winning a norris trophy so i think our offense is definitely going in the right direction obviously we still need to clean up our, obviously our defensive play a bit we need solid goaltending and our bottom six needs to be a bit stronger but i think this team is definitely getting closer and closer to being a playoff caliber team so yeah very excited for obviously next season and the next few years to come and see if this young team can make it into the playoffs now the hardware that we did win this season was Takari Ristolainen. He actually won the Selkie Trophy in 2030, which is impressive for considering he's only 23 years old, and he already has a Selkie Trophy under his repertoire. So who knows, maybe this guy's going to win a lot of Selkies in his career, maybe be like the uh, Jaska Linen of my original Draft of Glory series, or even, I think, uh, if I remember right, in my Ice Tiger series, I think Keith won a couple Selkies, but Ristolainen is going to be the first one to win it since him, I think, because I don't think I had any Selkie winners when I was doing my Halifax series last year, but I could be wrong with that. But you can see he was dominant on the face-off department, 58.3% on the draw, and he had 162 takeaways, which is friggin' fantastic. So, uh, Ristolainen, hopefully he's up there again for another Selkie next season, and maybe he continues to be that defensive forward that we want. Like, it's kind of insane, because he's a power forward, and he won the Selkie. Like, he wasn't even a two-way forward, and he won it. So, we just Got to hope that Ristolainen keeps on playing like that. And then hopefully we get uh, more uh, out of uh, a lot of our other guys. Like hopefully eventually Tuzolino wins like a uh, an Oris Trophy or something like that. And then hopefully we get guys like Kolars and stuff like that. Maybe picking up a lot of points that eventually at some stage they could win Art Ross Trophies and all that. But yeah, very good season for our team. And very excited to see what we could pick up in this year's draft to basically fill out a roster even more so. And hopefully next season we have even a deeper roster that... Uh, we could win even more games of 27 games. Like, we should be in the 30-win range next season, my guess, because uh, last season we had 19 wins. Then we jumped up all the way to 27, so I think we should easily get over 30 wins this season. I'm not too sure if 35 is a bit too much of a, uh, of a, uh, a standard to reach, but I think 35 wins could be doable, too depending on how good our goaltending and obviously our bottom six does and all that type of thing. But anyways, before we get into the draft and obviously the entire offseason, let's get in your guys' comments and see what you guys have to say about last episode, and then we'll get into the year six draft, and hopefully it's a decent one for us, and then obviously we'll get ourselves set up for another season. So the first comment is from Joseph D. Miller, who says, congrats to Risto, good luck with next season, and uh, yeah, uh, thank you for that. Uh, yeah, Risto had a great year, like I said. I was not expecting him to win a Selkie Trophy this year. Like, I knew he was always good at face-offs, but his uh, takeaways took a huge uh, turn this season, because I think before this, he was never getting un over 100 takeaways, but since he had 162 takeaways, that helped him out a lot, because usually the game determines Selkie winners by face-off percentage and takeaways, so if you look at the most takeaways, and then you see the best face-off percentage. Usually those are the type of guys that win it. And, like, it's kind of crazy that Ristolainen would win the Selkie considering if you look at our stats on paper here, we were uh, one of the worst teams in the entire league. We were the second worst team in the entire league, yet we have a Selkie Trophy winner. So that's uh, pretty damn impressive in my opinion. The next comment is from Ryan the Sharky who says, Selkie baby, and yep, Selkie baby indeed. Uh, hopefully, like I said, Risto wins more of them because if he becomes that defensive forward uh, for the team, that uh, would be great. Even though he's a power forward, maybe he's going to become more of like a two-way kind of guy. Like, he hasn't put up a t crazy ton of points, but he's a good goal scorer as well. Like, he kind of does everything this team needs, which is great. So, at some stage, maybe if uh, Stowitz eventually leaves the team in some stage in free agency, like in the next, like, 10, 12 seasons or so, maybe Risto Lions like the next future captain for this team. The next comment is from Nick Baca, Barons OC, who says, Nice to see all those snipers available this draft, El Mayo. I'm just messing with you. Doig has to be the guy. And, uh, I, yeah, I know he's just doing shots because uh, I didn't 
take Clifford last year at the draft. Uh, and there's no snipers, it seems like, in the top little bit of the draft. But yeah, Doig is definitely going to be the guy here that we're going to take in this first round. Considering he's a right winger, we do need more right wing help. And he's also a two-way forward too, which will make us a better defensive team. So I think that will be a really nice little addition for that second line. Uh, it's just I think it's definitely going to be a lot better than bringing in a defenseman that we don't know anything about. Uh, or not the defenseman we know anything about. We're actually drafting around fifth, right? Yeah, I think we're drafting at fourth or fifth. But it just doesn't make sense to get, obviously, another DFD because we just took one last year. Same with Keatley. We don't know for sure that he's a DFD, but he looks like he's going to be. So, obviously, the um, unanimous decision for us should be Esteban Doig. Next comment is from Big T who says you should get the DFD more physical in the offseason. And uh, yeah, that could be something we lean towards doing is uh, uh, for our offseason focus is basically making, where is he? He's probably actually higher up in this list and I've just missed him, right? Yeah, Bell. We could probably make him more of a defensive defenseman with wetter hitting because he wasn't really good in terms of defense this season and also his offense was somewhat okay. It would be interesting to make him like very good in physical categories if there's a way to like give him more hit related stuff, which I don't know if there is. They might be only shot blocking related. I don't really know, but we could definitely look into that. Uh, when I do that, obviously I'll probably cut that stuff out of the episode, but I'll definitely try and give him an off-season focus of more defensively minded things, so that way we can maybe make him the most best well-rounded defensive defenseman there is in the NHL. And the last and final comment is from Michael Dose, who says, Is there a menu that in-game that summarizes the season goals that you've given the players versus where they stand at the point in the season? Would be nice menu that EA could have. And no, they don't, I don't think. Uh, but like I was mentioning to your reply in the comments is basically if you go to like a player's card, so I don't think I'll be able to see it because we're in the off-season already, but normally if you go to a player's card like say wrist line in here and you scroll down to here, you can see the goals and promises area. Normally it will list what goals you gave to that player. So uh, yeah, that's basically how you see the goals that you give to every single player. Because like, say if I give one to Ristolainen right now, like let's go give Ristolainen his offseason uh, goal stuff right now. Um, let's actually just go, let's go defensive just for fun. And let's go with his defensive awareness. So I'll click that. It should, I think, put that as his goal this offseason now, right? Yeah, see, def off-season development, defensive awareness. So now you can see that. And during the regular season, obviously, if I gave him a goal of hitting 20 goals, it would list him in that area. So that's basically how those off-season stuff work. I know there isn't a menu that shows all of them. It would be nice. So maybe I should bring that up to EA so that way uh, they think about adding something like that. Like, imagine if they had it in, like, I guess, like, just... Uh, Maybe in like somewhere in one of these areas, maybe they'd have like an area that just shows like all your team's goals. That would definitely help out a lot. So yeah, I think I'll probably mention that to them after I finish recording this episode. And then hopefully they do something like that at some stage. No promises that it would get added right away. But obviously it would be a good little addition if they are to do something like that. So anyways, let's hop into this draft. See what we're able to snag up. Hopefully we can get some good hits outside of the first round selection because we already know our first round selection. But are we going to have good hits in like round two and beyond that? So hopefully we can get some more good players to fill out our roster a little bit more and uh, fill out that depth that we are kind of lacking a bit on offense, I would say. And also a little bit on defense too, for that matter. And then obviously our goaltending still needs to develop a bit, but at least we're growing the right way right now. So... Yeah, we have the fourth overall pick, so let's see what Toronto takes at number one. They take the franchise defenseman. There is Malachi Roberts was his name, right? Yeah, Malachi Roberts, the first franchise defenseman in this series. So that's kind of an interesting one, number 91. So John Tavares hopefully is retired by now, so this guy could actually use his number. But um, yeah, it looks pretty good. He's going to be a standard uh, two-way defenseman. But uh, it does kind of suck that we didn't have the first overall selection. Because imagine if we would have had a franchise two-way defenseman to add to our defensive core. That would be interesting. But he's a lefty that shoots right, which is also kind of unique. Because he doesn't shoot on the right side. He just shoots on the left side. So he'll be on like that kind of one-timer spot. Which he has a good shot power. So this guy could be a pretty good uh, puck-moving defenseman. And goal-scoring defenseman for the Leafs. Anaheim at number two is going to select Johnson, who is an offensive defenseman. Interesting. So that second overall pick, we didn't know anything about him. He is an offensive defenseman. So there's Quinton Johnson. Good shot power as well. 
Obviously, a little bit of weakness in the awarenesses and stuff right now, but if he develops, he could be a really good offensive defenseman for them. So, uh, yeah, that's a good little pickup for Anaheim in terms of bringing some offense from the back end. Washington at three right before our selection is going to take Salmalinen, or Salmanen, not Salmalinen, Salmanen, who is a high top six playmaker. So that's a little bit of a weird pick there for Washington, but it's a nice little addition, obviously, to their prospect pool, but kind of weird when still they go for high top sixes over elite players, in my opinion. All right, so obviously Doig is our pick because we're not going to go with the defensive defenseman. We're not going to go with Keatley because we don't know for a fact if he's DFD or not. There is another DFD here as well, which is kind of funny. So that's why Nick was kind of uh, just poking fun at me because I said, hey, there's going to be a lot of snipers in future drafts. Well, currently there's a lot of defensive defensemen in future drafts, which is not something I had in mind. But uh, we are going to definitely take Esteban Doig here, who looks like he could be just all around a really good player as a two-way forward like he should be able to score goals and also assist like he has offensive creativity and playmaking ability so maybe he'll be able to uh, set up some guys as well so Esteban Doig maybe future top line penalty kill as well would be great like imagine imagine him on the same penalty kill as Rista Linen or something like that like that would be a really nice little combination I think so Esteban Doig welcome to Albuquerque as my voice is trying to die on me and I'm trying not to clear my throat yet. 78 overall two-way forward. So he's a 78. That's pretty good, actually, considering that's the second best player in the draft at the moment in terms of overall rating. He does have an X-Factor, too. He has all alone. So that's interesting. So he maybe he'll be good in, like, a shootout lineup or something like that. So, yeah, I like that a lot. There is his attributes, if you guys wanted to take a look at that. Pretty much no weakness. He also could play center, basically. He doesn't have it as a position, but if we wanted to, we could try getting him to move over to center, so that way we have a second-line center uh, behind um, behind Ristolainen. We could try and do that not this offseason, but maybe the next offseason. I want your guys' opinions on that, but obviously I guess it depends on how he simulates first, but yeah, he looks like all around a really good player. Like The only weakness I see is his fighting skill, and obviously we don't need him to be a fighter, but he should be pretty good. So that's really nice to have. And he also is a, he's a left-handed shot. So that's kind of an interesting thing too. We could always try and see if he could play left wing as well. But I would think to keep him on the right wing because we don't have a lot of right wingers already. But that's going to make our top six look a lot better. Like him playing next to like Bogosian or something like that. And uh, also uh, Del Monte. I think that's going to be good. All right, let's take a look at the fifth overall pick, and then we'll simulate to our next selection here. Stoner was an 80 overall defensive defenseman. Interesting. So that's a pretty good overall to start. Pretty similar to the pick we had last year, and he also has Ice Pack. So that's what the Winnipeg Jets are going to get, a nice little defenseman for them. I actually do want to take a look at the other elite defenseman as well. If he was a DFD, he was. Okay. There is Keatley. Going to Buffalo. So Buffalo gets themselves a good defenseman. Now we'll simulate up to our next pick here at 35, and I'll go back through the first round again just in case there was anything interesting in the later stages of it. Uh, and some top six forwards, a really good starting overall for this top six forward by comparison to this one. Uh, Persson also was medium elite DFD 64 overall, so a little bit of a late round steal there. Grinder and Jaguar, interesting. Looks like a pretty standard draft class for the most part in this first round, if I'm being honest. No low lead steals yet. There is one, of course, Coral Lev. That would have been a nice one to have a low lead sniper. But obviously we didn't have a late first round selection. If Coral Lev fell to the second round, I would have been really happy. But uh, there's another one in Sweeney. Oh, yeah, I think I remember we were looking at Sweeney and we said, though, that we probably won't be able to get him because he probably will go earlier. I think I mentioned that in the last episode. Center playmaker. Yeah, that would have been really nice, too, if he would have fallen to the second round. Uh, now we're seeing medium top sixes and medium nines going though, so that's not great. That means the draft class quality might have dipped off a lot. Uh, Prince goes to the LA Kings early in the second round, so I think there was a low lead that I pinned here other than Soloviev. Was there anybody else supposed to go in here around the stage? Oh yeah, Rick Kim. He's not supposed to go till 65. I'm trying to think of logically if we'd have to take him already. Because technically we are at 34, 35 right now. There would be 30 more selections. Yeah, I think our next pick might be like 66. So we might have to go with Kim based on that. 
because Kim probably doesn't make it out of this round. He is a medium elite as well, so I think that guarantees that we have to take this guy already. It might be like a little bit of a low overall and he, higher than he's supposed to go, but I think he's not going to be available next round, and I want to make sure that obviously we take him. So we're going to already take a little bit of a reach and take Rick Kim, who's going to be like a really low overall medium elite, but he's 17 years old, he's a center, and we could hopefully develop him in the right way that he could be like a future second line center for our team. So Rick Kim, welcome aboard. He's a center sniper. Damn, I didn't think he was going to be a sniper. That's interesting. Maybe we could change him more over to a winger at some stage of his face-offs aren't great, which right now they aren't. Obviously, I'm not going to play him in the NHL or AHL yet because he is a pretty low overall, but maybe we try and get him to change over to a right winger, and then we could try and change the guy that we just drafted first round over to a center. But obviously, it depends if they would want to do that. But for right now, I think we'll just develop him as a center and try and get his face-offs better maybe, also his shooting and all that. But, yeah, this guy should be a good player at some stage in his career, hopefully. So there is that. Let's actually see a couple picks here in a second. Oh, man, Solovyov was a low elite. I don't know if I like that. I just ended up maybe going for Solovyov, but I wanted to go with the guaranteed option. We didn't know for a fact that Solovyov was going to be a low elite. We had a three bar scouted out. He's a 66 sniper low elite. That would have been a much better choice, I think, than the medium elite. Is the medium elite might not pan out as well. I, I knew I should have went for Solovyov, but at the same time, I was not thinking Kim was going to be available next round. If Kim was available next round and we could have got Solovyov at this selection, that would have been really nice. But, yeah, there's no guarantees that Kim would have been available. Hopefully Kim develops and shows me that he's a better player than Solovyov. Watch Solovyov become an absolute stud, though. But uh, I think, regardless, at least we got good potential. But, obviously, the overall and all that stuff would have been really nice to have Solovyov in our NHL lineup this season as, like, kind of like a bottom six score or something like that. Or even a top six score, for that matter. Um, Let's see. Bolesky was top four as well. Okay. I think there was supposed to be another low lead in that round, but I'm not too sure. <clears throat> okay. Oh, my goodness. Okay, let's simulate to our next pick at 68. So, yeah, we probably wouldn't have been able to get Kim if I would have not uh, taken him there. Uh, let's see if we can find any third-round steals here. Mm, is there anybody that I pinned here? No. No guaranteed meme elites. There's a lowly grinder that I pinned. And another one. These guys I could take much later than this. So I could definitely take a chance on some people here. Uh, Jim Edmonds as a defenseman. Probably not super high potential. Jerome Vermette as a left winger. Might be a top six forward. There also could be a low lead here. Or a medium elite as well. Wanvig actually looks kind of okay. I might go for Marcos Wanvig here. Hackerstrom might be a low lead though as a defenseman. Hmm. Trying to think if I want to take a chance on Ackerstrom or if I want to take Wanvig. Because Wanvig right now looks good. He has no weakness. Ackerstrom as well. They're both 18 years old. Ackerstrom's definitely going to be a longer ways to make it. But but we also do need more right wingers too. Hmm. I feel like Wanvig could be just a meme 9 though. Hmm. Yeah, if we compare him to like Owen McCutcheon, he's probably a meme 9, my guess. Smoskowitz, yeah, I think that's going to be the case. Ackerstrom could be just a medium top 6D, though. But he, uh, he would be listed as three years out if he was a medium top 6D, not a four-year-old guy. I'm going to take a chance that Thomas Ackerstrom is a low elite. We need more defensemen, and if he's a low elite, that would just give us more depth. So let's see if Ackerstrom is a low elite. Please, Ackerstrom, low elite. Low four. I should have known. Whenever they're, like, not fully scouted at low elite, it's usually a low four. Well, hopefully Ackerstrom outgrows that potential. We've had some good luck growing some low fours so far, so i got to hope that Ackerstrom is one of those type of guys. Uh, let's take a look at what the other guy was, though. Edmonds low four as well. Smoskowitz was medium nine. Vermette was medium nine. Yeah, see, we would have gotten ourselves a medium nine, basically, because there's one Vig. 64 overall. Like, it's a solid overall to start for a medium nine but yeah we probably made a wrong selection there but that's okay as long as we get some good other picks i'll be okay so our low leads that we pinned aren't supposed to go still for a bit right yeah not till like we probably could take them next round 
Because I'll definitely be taking Mark Dagg. And then I might be taking Peterson as well. Mark Dagg is a grinder, which is hilarious. So lowly grinder would be nice. Um, but first and foremost, let's take a chance on a random player here. Let's take a look at some attributes and see if there's anything that screams good player to us. Mm, this guy might be okay. He has maybe some 2B physicals. Nick Sabrin, 6'5", 220. Jeez, big boy. Mm, yeah, I think I'm going to take a chance on him. Yeah, because he's looking like a power forward. He might be a low 6 too, which is better, obviously, than a meme 9 in a way. But still, we're going to take a chance on Nick Sabarin. Low top 9. 61 overall is a pretty solid starting point, at least for a low 9. But I don't know if he becomes much of anything. He has good shooting, actually, so he could be a good AHLer. But not the best player in the world. This isn't the best draft class, so that kind of sucks. But uh, we're now at 135. We do still have two more picks, so I could probably take the other guys next round, the two low elites. But, um, ooh, there's a guaranteed medium four here. That's interesting. Vojtek Yeniki. I could be completely butchering that. I might just have to take him because a medium four is better than nothing. There is also a medium six sniper around at this point, too, who is a right winger, Mateo Harvey. But I feel like top six forwards are usually a crapshoot at this point. He's also 20 years old. So that's also not great. So medium top four, is he 18 years old or is he 20 as well? He's 18. Yeah, I think that makes my choice clear. So Vojtek Yeniki is going to be our selection here because he's got medium four potential. 49 overall, so a very low overall to start. But it's a much better potential than the medium seventh D that just went right before him. So I like that pick, even though it might not work out. Who knows? And our final two picks are going to be those two guys that one's guaranteed to be a low elite. The other one, we honestly have no idea if he's going to be a low elite or not. But we are going to take Dag here with the next selection, the low elite grinder. I think this is a cool little option for our bottom six. Maybe he becomes a penalty kill specialist or just a guy that hits people. But Mark Dag, welcome also to Albuquerque. 62 overall. Wow. Okay, I was not expecting him to be that high of an overall for a late pick. Because usually when you draft a low elite grinder, or low elite player in general, I should say, they usually drop off in overall quite a bit by round 6 and 7. Like you see, 55 overall ones going, not 62. So Mark Dagg is a huge steal with that overall for an 18-year-old. So that's really good. Like, he could have easily went earlier than 6th round. But uh, obviously, it's going to be interesting to see how he develops because I've never had a low league grinder before, so we'll see if he actually develops nicely in terms of offense or if he's more of developing in the defensive areas or the hitting areas. Like, it should be interesting to see with that. And then our final selection here, we're going to probably take that other guy that could be a low lead that we don't know for sure about. Hopefully, he's a low lead sniper. If Skylar Peterson's a low lead sniper, this might be one of our best draft classes. I don't think it's our best draft class because we've had a couple misses, but Skylar Peterson could be a really good steal here if he is a sniper. So let's take a chance on him. I don't really think he's going to be that great right now, but I think he should be low lead based on the fact that it says he is five years out. So, let's uh, go for Skyler and hope he's a low elite sniper here. And he isn't a low elite sniper. He's a low elite playmaker, which I'll still take for sure. But I was expecting a sniper, but I will take a playmaker. So, a couple low elites in this year's draft. That's good for our future for sure. Not all of them are going to get contracts right out of the gate. We might wait a little bit on some of them just to see if they develop a bit more first. But, yeah, Skyler Peterson, that's a pretty good steal. Hopefully, he becomes one of the best uh, steals we've ever had. <clears throat> oh my goodness, my voice kind of just like went crazy on that point because I have friggin' peanut butter toast. But there is our draft. I'd say a pretty successful one. Doig is great. Kim obviously has the potential to be great. Will he develop? Who knows? Ackerson, Sabarin are kind of mid-picks. Yannicky could be something as a top four potential guy, but we don't know for sure. And then Dag and Peterson are good little steals. So I would say that's a pretty successful draft for the aliens today. Now we got to get it into the re-sign stage, and I think we got to give, who was it, a big contract this offseason? I think it was Kolar's, if I remember right. Um, coaches, do I want to bring back Lawson, our former head coach? Yeah, I think I might replace him, so I'm going to let him go. Uh, the HL associate coach and assistant coach, I could replace him too, so I think I'll replace all three of those coaches this offseason because they're not super important to get back and I can find a replacement easily for Lawson so let's go ahead and do that as well in this offseason 
In terms of our scouts, I think we have good scouts already, so we'll reassign everybody back. That way we could uh, at least get some good results. I think we've been getting some good results with the draft as of late, so definitely these scouts are better than the ones we had in the beginning of this franchise mode. So let's get them all signed back up again here so they could uh, hopefully do some good work for us again next season and for seasons to come for that matter. And one more here. Seth Zinger. I think that might be it. No, Duffy as well. Paisley Duffy. What a name. And Kayla Scott. Shea Weber doesn't need to be signed. Okay, perfect. So there is all the scouts. Now we gotta get into resigning our <clears throat> now we gotta get into resigning our players or I had to make a weird cut probably because my voice just decided to start dying as I was talking. In terms of resigning, let's see what we got. Yeah, Kolar's and Narain are gonna need contracts. Bogosian's also probably gonna need a decent amount of money. Maybe not a ton of money. Uh, everybody else should be still, hopefully, a two-way contract. And then we have a bunch of guys that are just fill, filler players for the AHL and NHL. We might not need to bring all of them back, which is good. So let's start, though, with uh, Semenov giving him his ELC for the AHL. Because that would be great to get him on board. Welcome aboard to Semenov. Uh, RFA is I am going to let go maybe of a goalie. Or should I run with three goalies in the AHL? Maybe I'll run with three goalies. Tamalin lost morale, and Ollie lost morale. Well, Tamalin's going to be let go of soon enough anyways. Uh, we are going to give a two-way deal to Del Coley. He'll accept it immediately. Thorn. Thorn was really good last year in the AHL. I might as well hold on to Thorn for now, but I am going to definitely let go of Tamalin next offseason because he just doesn't need to be here much longer. So in terms of the UFAs, I'll leave that for now because... Oh, wait, actually, Jenks needs his ELC. He's actually up to a 65 at 21, which is not bad considering his potential. Uh, yeah, the run will give him his ELC, so that way there's another guy in the AHL just to fill out the cro uh, crop down there. Gite has bottom six potential. I guess we could just sign some of these guys regardless. I'm not going to just let them walk, so... Uh, in terms of RFAs, though, let's go to the bottom of this list and uh, start giving out some uh, contracts for the HL guys, like Fair and all that. I don't feel like Fair and all that are just going to pan out, really. But we got to obviously fill out a roster with our drafted guys, and the ones that we didn't draft, we can start letting go of some of them relatively soon. Uh, Timmons up to a 70 overall, wants two-way as well. It's good that a lot of these guys want two-way contracts still, because... If I remember right, when I was doing Draft of Glories in the past, the, like a lot of these 70 overall guys would be asking for one-way contracts, but it seems like they might have fixed something like that between NHL 24 and 25, because at least a lot of these guys seem to not, not be asking for one-way deals, even though they played in the NHL, which is good. Chulipov. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what our club looks like next season, because we should basically have everybody on our roster over a 70 overall which is a good way to start off uh, year number seven. And obviously the new drafted additions as well coming in. It's going to be an interesting season for sure. Malkin up to a 75. That's really good to see. He's a low six. Like we're getting some good growth from guys that didn't really have much potential at the beginning, which is nice. Capaduca getting signed. Oh, no, he just said he'll ex I'll look into it. That's interesting and accept right away. Um, we will rate a second on Bogosian and all that. Let me go to the unsigned here, though. We are going to definitely sign Doig to his ELC here. He'll be playing in our NHL team for sure, I think. Uh, Ahinen, should I give him his ELC for the AHL? Probably. He is AHL eligible. He's got top six potential. You know what? We're going to sign him already, and I'm going to probably, like, go over random, uh, filter player. So Ahinen could come in. Deg could probably get signed, but I might just wait a year on him because he's got that lowly potential. He isn't AHL eligible either, so we might as well wait and see how he develops first and foremost. I'm also going to wait on guys like Tulipov still, I think, him, Lee, just so they could get a little bit more growth while they're unsigned. Spets is not going to get his ELC yet. Um, <clears throat> he isn't even AHL eligible anyway, so it's okay. All right. In terms of our actual RFAs that are very important to get back, Kolars, Narena, and Bogosian, what are you guys going to be asking for here? Bogosian only wants a two-way contract. I'll, I'll take him on a two-way contract for a year. Perfect. was expecting him to want a one-way. Uh, what about Narena? Narena wants a three-year deal at 3.075. 
That would walk him right away to being a UFA, which I don't like. Uh, does he? Well, he doesn't really like to turn, but he does have full organizational interest. Maybe we should just give him a three-year deal as a trial run, but even at two years, he becomes a UFA. It's only the one year that he becomes an RFA, so <clears throat> I guess we will give him the three years that he's asking for, but there's a good chance I will have to give him a lot of money when this contract ends. Because he is a pretty solid offensive defenseman. He's worth the type of money he's asking for, too, for sure. And since he has full organizational interest, I should be able to go down by two bars is what some people say. So we'll see if I could get him down to, like, just a little bit lower than this. Yeah, like 2.625 should be okay. So we'll try that for three years. Good little trial run for Norena. And obviously, if he develops the right way and he plays really good... He's going to get a big contract when that ends, but we got to give him some term here. And he already accepts. Perfect. So Kai Norena is on board. I like that. And then Kolars, this is going to be probably the most expensive contract we've had yet, my guess. Ooh, maybe not, but still, 9.25 for eight years is not bad for what he brings to the team. He wants a no-movement clause for the last three years of his contract, too, which is good with me, because obviously we don't make trades in the series. But I should be able to drop him down by like maybe one and a half bars because he doesn't have two uh yeah, the full bars of um organizational interest but i should be able to drop his price down a little bit here so something to like 8.35 for eight years i think that would be a good little deal it's only eight percent of our cap hit right now so yeah i think that's not a bad offer for him and i hope that he'll accept it when we offer it to him the good thing with Kolars is he's been one of our best players the last few years, so might as well lock him up long term. So let he accept this right away. He will get to us back to us tonight. Okay, that's fine. All right. Uh, the other guys I don't care too much about right now, so I'm gonna wait on them before we actually get to filling out a roster with the other guys too. So uh, looks like some people have definitely accepted the contract extensions based on some notification I just saw. So hopefully Kolars is one of them, because that would be really nice. Capaduca is back. Bogosian is back. Kolars is back as well. Very nice. Very, very nice. Okay. We're doing some good work with the cap, I think. And apparently we're at 50 out of 50 contracts, so I should probably free up some roster space. Um, I probably will sign some of these filler guys just because of our cap space. I might have to let go of some of these RFAs. Actually, I'll probably let go of a couple. Like, Let's let go of three of these UFAs here. Free up some roster spaces. Um, maybe I'll let go of a couple of these RFAs as well. Yeah, let's let go of two RFAs as well. I might need more roster players, but I just want to make sure we're filling up some roster space. So these guys are just going to want two-way contracts, so we'll easily we'll get them back. And then the uh, UFAs is the ones that are going to be our cap oils, uh, just because we need our cap oils still, because we're not cap compliant yet. Even though we've been giving out some big contracts already. Alright, so that's good. So these three guys will be our cap wheels. We'll give two of them some big term money. And the other one will be like more medium type money. So you could take $20 million. <laughs> and then you could take uh, as well 20 Eh, maybe not 20 Actually, yeah, well, let's give you 20 I'll knock us down to 12 and then we'll take uh, this dude, and he could just get, like, a minimum amount of money. Not a minimum amount of money, but he'll just get, like, yeah, $6 million or something like that. We don't really need to sign him to a big-time deal, but there we go. Now we have $8 million in cap space, and we're definitely cap compliant. And we have everybody back that we want to. And also free up some roster space, but our team's going to be interesting for sure next season based on this. So, yeah, I'm excited. Doig is definitely going to be a nice little uh, player to have behind Staubitz. And then Malkin would be more of a third liner, I guess, at that point. That's okay. That's okay. All right. Now we'll send to free agency. We'll look into signing those new coaches that we need because we do need some new coaches. And then I'll probably do some off-season like, uh, goal stuff offline uh, between the ep in, in, not in between episodes, but on this episode. And I'll cut that out, and then we'll simulate up to next season and get uh, set up for another year but uh, yeah we need an NHL associate coach and an HL associate and an HL assistant okay let's see what there is available for that 
So in terms of, we can actually look at best NHL head coaches and make them an associate. Technically, it doesn't have to be an actual associate. <clears throat> Colton Hernandez, 45%. We're looking for a high team fit potentially as well. Albert Morita might be okay because he's a 54. Uh, yeah, let's go with Albert Morita and see if he wants to be our associate coach here. And then I will worry about the AHL stuff. Eh, maybe I'll get the AHL stuff right now. Let's go based on teaching grade if possible. Uh, actually, let's just look at AHL associates for a second here. Who has the best rating as an AHL associate? Not really much of anything here. All right, learn about teaching grade. We'll go with you as an AHL associate. Jim Hargrave will bring you in. And then we will bring in an assistant one as well. Which we'll go with this. Actually, those ones are all goalie related. So we'll just bring in another one of these guys as the assistant. So that way we can fill out the HL coaching staff a bit. And that should be good. Perfect. So coaches are dealt with. Hopefully they accept. And uh, yeah, now I will have to get into the offseason focuses. So I will see you guys once I give all these players some offseason stuff to do. Okay guys, so all the off-season stuff has been set, so basically the normal type of things, most of the guys are trying to work on their offensive awareness. Some guys are trying to work more on their face-offs, like Tulipov for instance, so that way they can maybe become a better centerman than we intended them to be. So that is all good to go, and all we need to do is just wait and see if these coaches accept uh, those contracts, and then once that's done, we can get ourselves situated for year number seven it's kind of crazy that we're already almost getting to year seven because i feel like these early stages of this franchise mode have kind of gone by really quickly but we get our hl assistant coach so welcome board to jeff Akeson. okay or Akison, one of them too uh albert marita in as our nhl associate coach so that's nice we have a good coaching staff for this upcoming year and then jim hargrave in as the hl associate coach so we get all the coaches we wanted which is perfect Let's uh, start simulating up to next season, I guess, already, right? Yeah, we might as well. And get ourselves uh, set up for another year. I'm kind of curious on how good our chemistry is going to be in our lineup and basically who's going to be on our NHL roster because some guys could get potentially demoted uh, from last season. So that's going to be an interesting thing. Like eventually at some point, Truffle might be out of our defensive court because other guys are pushing him out and all that type of thing. So... We could have a bit of a different looking squad than last year. It's going to be mostly, I'd say, the same, but obviously there's going to be a subtle difference with some of the injections into the lineup. So let's go to Ed Alliance here, and let's go to roster moves and see what we're working with. So if we go to roster moves, do we have the right guys in the right spot? So goaltending, Del Coley and Shipley, 75 and 74. AHL has Thorne, Oli, Tamlin, and Seminov. Likely, I'm going to have to scratch Thorne and Tamlin. Maybe I shouldn't have signed Thorne back up. Uh, but Oli and Seminov are technically the youngest goalie prospects there. And they need to play, I think. I swear Thorne's only a year older than Oli, but two points better. Damn, I forgot that we drafted Thorne so late. Seventh round pick. Yeah. How long did we sign him for? We signed him for two years. Why did I do that? <laughs> uh, hmm. Yeah, we'll probably play Ollie and Seminov this year. Thorne and Tamlin will sit on the bench. And that way, if there's any injuries, once we actually turn injuries back on, we have a lot of goalies. But I am going to have to let go of Tamlin in the offseason because there's the elite goalie prospect that needs to be signed, I think, this offseason coming up. So we have a little bit of a logjam in net at the moment. We also could let go of an NHL goalie at some stage, but right now, not going to do that. In terms of the NHL defensive core, Tuzolino Bell, Norena Whitfield. Wow, Whitfield went up to a 75. That's actually some substantial growth for the medium six. He has been a very good offensive defenseman in the AHL level. Hasn't done that yet in the NHL. So it will be interesting to see if he can do that this year. Uh, then we have Bates and David. Trevel Yan is actually on the outs, as I was expecting. That kind of sucks. I mean, I could play him over Walking David because we do already have now two offensive defensemen. I think actually that might be the play here. Yeah, wa uh, <laughs> Walking David's got to go back down to the AHL. I know he's technically the better overall, but uh, we don't need three offensive defensemen in our rotation. We just don't. So that's going to be our defensive core for the season. Uh, right wingers, Stubitz, Doig, Malkin, Perron, Dezote does not need to be up here. We could send him down. He's just a filler player. 
Anybody that should come up on the right wing side of things? Timmons. Weston Timmons probably should be up here. But is there anybody that shouldn't be up here? Damn, Weston Timmons might be out of the lineup. Yeah, he, I think he is. I think he is. Damn, that's interesting. So, yeah, Timmons is back in the AHL. Him and Zetterberg will play down there. Left wing side of things, Kolars, Del Monte, Capaduca, and Noonan. Capaduca is up to a 78 now. Damn, these guys are getting some good growth. I like that he could play at least on the left side too, because if he couldn't, Perron would probably be out of the lineup if that happened. Uh, Camilleri is getting close to being able to make our NHL squad as well, which is kind of nice. Technically, I could call him up and send Noonan down. But Noonan's a 2A forward, and Camilleri is a power forward. I would prefer Camilleri to be in a more of a top 9 role, not a 4th line guy. So I'm going to keep him down there for at least one more year. Same with Burray, obviously, for a couple more years. Centers, wrist the line, and Bogosian's up to an 80. Let's freaking go. A lot of these guys that we drafted in later rounds are actually developing quite nicely because of the offseason stuff. And we have Seen, who is up to a 75. 74 on face-offs. Tulipov, who I addressed on face-offs, is up to a 75 on the face-off dot in a 73 total. Ahinen's back in the minors for the season. Okay. Yeah, I think our squad's looking pretty good. Obviously, we got to get our lineup set up here now, so let's just go best lines for a second, and we will readjust it. So uh, We probably want Mulkin on that third line because Prawn's a grinder, so Prawn would be on the fourth line. Steen's a sniper. Tulipov is a two-way, so I probably will swap the two of them around. And yeah, okay, this is looking good. <clears throat> this is actually looking way better than anticipated, at least going into the preseason portion. Yeah, this is really nice. Everybody's in their natural positions too, which is even better. Yeah, this is looking great. Alright. <laughs> we actually might have a pretty solid team this year. Defensively, is also developing really nicely too. Obviously, we can't play uh, Norena and Whitfield together. Norena has dropped down to a 78 now all of a sudden, so I don't know what's with his growth pattern, but he's been going up and down quite a bit. He kind of reminds me of uh, Sherov from my Halifax series because that guy outgrew his potential, and then he started to drop off a little bit at one stage. But obviously, our three offensive defensemen, because we have Norena too, will all have to be on different pairings. So that's going to be an interesting dilemma. I mean, at some stage, I don't know if Whitfield knocks somebody out of the defensive cord. Like, Trevelyan is definitely on his last legs here, I'd say. And then goaltending, Del Colleen, Shipley. Yeah, this is look good. This looks good. What about power play setup? What do we got? Wrist line and style, what's Kolars? Two is Alina and Narena. I mean, that's a lot of skill level. What about power play two? Bogosian, Capaduca, Del Monte. Whitfield runs his own unit with Steen. I like that, actually, a lot. Good idea to have Whitfield on one unit and the other two guys on their other unit. I like it. Penalty killers, what is it looking like? Ristolainen and Staubitz. What about the 2A4 we just drafted? Is Yep, Doig and Tulipov. I like that. I like it. Yeah, this is looking good. This is looking really good, man. For year 7, this might be one of the best looking draft of glory teams I've had by year 7. This team could easily, I think, hit 35 wins. Because we have a legit top line. Our second line is almost legit, too, because... Bogosian is listed as a depth forward, so at least he's an NHL caliber player. Doig should draw, uh, draw a decent amount of growth. He could be up to an 82 by the end of the season easily, maybe 83 even. And then our third line is almost legit too, because Capaduke is like a legit NHLer almost. Yeah, this is looking nice. Very, very nice. Okay. Well, I wasn't expecting to have this good of a team by this stage, but here we are. Um, let's get our guys in the lineup that need to be, I think. Yeah, Beret keeps still getting scratched, which is kind of dumb, but we'll throw him in. Rebello will come out for Gite because I drafted Gite, so I'll have him in the lineup. I guess it wasn't Rebello that's going to come out. Never mind. Zetterberg will get into the top six. Uh, anybody else that needs to be put in for the AHL? No. We'll get Ahin into the top line because I didn't draft McPhee. So there you go. Uh, and then in terms of the defensive core, this is a bit of a log jam on defense. We'll go something maybe like that. Who scratched? Tamalin. That's fine. Volk is scratched. That's okay because he's a low seventh. Jenks being scratched in his rookie season isn't what I had in mind. Uh, but I do want Ollie to be starting in the HL as the goaltender and Semenov as the backup. So those will be the young goaltenders. 
I kind of want Jinx to be in the lineup on defense, so I might have to take somebody out here. And I'm not taking out Spike Parks, because Spike Parks will go down in history as the first guy to win three Mastertons for us. But, um, hmm. Might have to take out Pavelski, but I don't know if Jinx is going to work well in that top six. Ah, he looks okay. Yeah, we'll get him in then. So that way, basically, the players that are scratched are guys that don't really have much potential and guys that I'm thinking of letting go of at some point soon. So, there you go. Yeah, this is <laughs> this is exciting. We only have one guy with an actual X Factor on the four group. Yeah, only one guy in the entire team actually has a zone ability. I, I actually really like this, man. I think this is going to be a good year. The plus ones across the board is nice, too. Uh, it's no plus five, but that's okay. And then the defense, of course, the even zeros across the board. Like, this should be hypothetically a good season based on all that. Like, I don't know what our ratings compare to some of the other teams, but we could definitely take a look at that here shortly. Uh, obviously, I'll be doing season goals in the next episode, or well, I'll cut that out of the next episode, I should say. But what I do want to take a look at quickly, let's actually simulate to the preseason first game already, even though we're going to do that next episode, obviously. But I do want to see what our ratings are at now, because I am kind of curious on that. Let's just talk to our head coach here for a brief mit. What's the season goal with our team? A lot of work still to do before we compete. So he doesn't think we're going to make the playoffs yet still, but he thinks that uh, there's still a lot of work with her team, which I, I agree. I think there's obviously still a lot of work to do, but I think it's definitely a lot better than anticipated. What is our ratings looking like across the board this season? That's what I wanted to see. So we have a 78 on offense, which isn't too bad, or 71 on defense, 73 in goaltending. So yeah, it's the goaltending and defense that still needs to be upgraded a bit. The offense is definitely starting to uh, take shape, which is very, very nice. So that's what I wanted to take a look at for that. I actually want to take a brief look at the draft class. I know we don't know anything about the draft class and what type of prospects are available. So that's the last thing I want to do in this episode is just take a look at uh, what type of prospects are in this year's draft class or what is projected to go. Because we don't know these type of players yet, but... Couple defenders early on, Isbister and Laton Dress. Parks is supposed to go first overall as a left wing slash center. That's kind of interesting. He can play both positions. We can use more centers, so maybe he's an interesting player. Cameron Dixon's a center. Hopkins is a center. So there could be actually some things of need here in this draft, which is kind of exciting. Is there any early uh, goaltenders in this draft? Not till second round, so these guys could be elite, but obviously... I don't really think we need any goalie prospects at this stage right now. Uh, but we could obviously target stuff like that too. Shout out to Bob Farmer. What a name. <laughs> Bob Farmer that plays in Saskatoon, huh? All right. Well, anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this episode of Albuquerque Aliens Draft to Glory Franchise Mode. So in next episode, we will take it to the Year 7 Season Simulation. We'll see what this team could do. I think we easily hit 30 wins, but obviously... I think our defense and goaltending maybe still need some work, but obviously I'm very excited to see what our team could do because our offensive car almost is starting to get to the point where we're actually kind of looking like an NHL squad, which is exciting. So let me see that below, and I'll see you guys next time.